it's so great to have you with us today as we continue with our study of the Philippians series. But before we do begin, it is Mother's Day and I do have three fabulous mothers who also happen to be pastors and leaders here at Hope Centre. Hello, ladies. How is everyone? Good. You good? Yeah. Now, Beck, talk to us. You have three kids in three different life seasons right now in a pandemic at home. How are you going? We're good. So we have 11 years old, six years old and three years old. Wow. So it's loud, it's messy, very messy, but we are having fun. It's, it's good. That's great. And yeah. I know Sarah, um, not only are you a mum of two primary age boys, you're a pastor, you're pioneering one of our sites, but on top of that, you're a full-time teacher. How is everything going with all the changes? Oh uh, yeah, it changes daily. Uh, but we roll with it and uh, like many essential workers we're just doing what we have to do and uh, yeah it's a crazy season but God's helping us get through. <laughs> I, I don't know about you but I have massive respect for all our teachers, all our parents who have still got children in school who are doing this juggle, it's amazing. Now Brioni, you posted something the other day that gave me a good laugh. Um, as we went into ISO, people were having to stay at home. You just posted something that said, welcome everybody to what I do, staying at home. <laughs> Has much changed for you? You've got three young kids, they're all quite young. Um, not at all. <laughs> Shout out to the stay-at-home mums. It has not changed at all for us all. <laughs> yeah. Are you loving life at home? Yeah, I do. I really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Now, we might look like we're all in similar life seasons. I have two young boys as well. But we are very aware and very sensitive to the fact that on Mother's Day today, there are going to be people who are in their own life season, life stage, and today might be a day that brings joy for some, but we are very aware that this is also a day that's going to bring pain, sometimes some mixed feelings. Um, we want you to know that we see you, uh, we love you, and we are praying for you. We are very much thinking of uh, people who are trying right now. We desperately love to have a child, to be able to celebrate uh, a Mother's Day or a Father's Day. We're aware of the empty nesters that um, might be for the first time really experiencing life at home without children running around. Uh, we're aware of the amazing grandmothers and spiritual mothers in our community who do an incredible job raising somebody else's child or just being a champion of um, perhaps a, a beautiful single mum. And single mums, we're thinking of you too. You are our heroes. So I just thought it would be fantastic as we uh, kick off into our Philippians series. Beck, if you would just pray, um, not just over mums, but I think everybody on days like today, um, you know, relational pain or those mixed emotions can really come to the surface. So would you mind praying for us? Sure, I'd love to. Thank you. Lord, today we just come before you and we thank you for your house. We thank you for your people. Lord, I pray for every single person that is watching right now. Lord, that you're gonna give us ears to hear what you wanna to say to us. And Lord, I pray for families. I pray for those who would love to have a family. Yes, I pray for broken families right now. Yeah. Lord, that your Holy Spirit is gonna bring healing and restoration to them. Lord, we lift up every parent, every grandparent to you right now. Lord, we pray that you would be with them. You would be in their homes. You would be encouraging and surrounding them with your love. And in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness to be poured out. Amen. Before we dive into the scriptures, I just want to ask this one simple question. Feel free, anybody, to jump in on it. But Brioni, I am going to start with you. Uh, when I first started really seeking God, I was 18, and I had no problem whatsoever finding truth about who God is, who Jesus is, but I did have a hesitation when it came to the idea of belonging to a church community, what would you say to people listening in who perhaps like me struggle with that idea of connecting in a church community? Yeah, I think a really good place to start with that for me and probably most believers would be when we look at the life of Jesus and when we know he's the perfect reflection of our Father in heaven, that means he's fully God and fully man. When I think of God walking around the earth, you'd think 
he would not need anybody. Like he should have just, Jesus should have just gone at his own pace, done his own thing. Yet instead we see that he chose to not only put himself with 12 people wow. permanently, which means that that's not just loving people from afar, but that's like quite a permanent fixture wow. in his life. Yeah. And we definitely know they all weren't perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Judas cough cough. <laughs> <laughs> it also, we can also look and see that he did not shy away from communities, from the rich, from the poor, from, from anybody. And you know what? He would not have even thought of people as rich or poor or weird like we do it in our flesh sometimes. Um, so I think it's this, in some ways it's a constant battle, mm. the idea of community between flesh and spirit. Because yeah. when we go by our flesh, I just want my best friends and I don't want to talk to anybody that I think is weird. Yet when we align ourselves with the Spirit of God, that looks so different. We start to even find ourselves loving people that we would not normally love. And um, if Jesus was like that and if he surrounded himself with people, then I want to be like that too. Great, I love that. Sarah, Beck, do you want to add to that? Yeah, sure. I think. Um, Talking about Philippians, if you go back to Acts, Paul um, goes to Philippi and meets Lydia. Then um, he starts sharing and he and Silas get beaten up and thrown in prison. <laughs> like, yeah, we really want to go back to Philippi. Um, but he does. Yeah. And he, he continues this relationship with them, even though there are painful memories and bad memories there. And sometimes uh, we've just got to obey the Spirit of God and, and go, hey, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to open my life. And because that's like Bree said, that's what Jesus did. Yeah. And, uh, and we see that with Jesus. We see it with Paul. What would you say, Beck, to somebody like me who at the age of 18 had this idea that church is just filled with hypocrites and, and people who are judgmental and all these people who just seem to have these perfect lives and do everything right. That was really one of the, the big objections for me. What would you say to that person? Uh, I grew up in church. I'm a church kid through and through. And I've seen the absolute best of church. I've seen the absolute worst of church life, if you like. But at the core of it, we're all humans, we're all flawed. Right. Yeah. Not one of us has reached perfection. So I think the authenticity yeah. of people's mm. faith and of a community right. of people who are authentically loving Jesus and authentically doing their best to love each other yeah. mm. is yeah. what is so attractive about God's church. It's what makes us as Christians attractive mm. and beautiful people is that we know we're flawed but we know we serve a perfect right. God yeah. and that's the best part of being a part of his family and his house. Mm. Well, for me, it's God doesn't ask us for perfection. He asks us and invites us into relationship. And if we take that premise of our relationship with God and apply it to the people around us, we extend grace to people. Uh, we, we love people who are different to us. And that's the message of the gospel that really transforms lives is you belong. Come as you are in your imperfect way. Because guess what? I'm imperfect. Some days we might be judgmental. Some days we might be hypocritical. But isn't that it? If we were all perfect, what would be the need of God and what would be the need of his church? So I think that's fantastic. We're going to dive straight into um, this scripture that we are reading for today out of Philippians, which is um, chapter one, verses seven to 11. So feel free to read along with me at home. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you. Paul is talking with incredible joy and incredible affection for the Philippians. Since I have you in my heart and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. In verse nine, it says, and this is my prayer. And if I were you, I'd really take note of what he says, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. 
Wow, what a powerful prayer. It is such a generous prayer yeah. that Paul yeah. is praying. Yeah. And we can almost gloss over the fact that Paul is in prison. He has this overflow of affection, this overflow of joy that is coming out for a group of people he is socially distanced from. And, you know, I think right now in this season, while we are socially distanced from each other, we could take a leaf out of Paul's book. So, Sarah, I would love to hear from you and just really find out um, what would you say um, to people? What, what leapt off the page for you as you listened into that scripture? Um, listening into the scripture, first off, uh, I was just captivated by the love that Paul had for the Philippians, for the church. Um, that's like he, he says that I love you the way that Christ loves you. That's a huge call. Like that's that's massive. But then, and then he goes on to start praying for them, and he prays that their love would grow. And I think that he's sort of given a hint. Like in in this book, Paul starts and introduces himself as a slave or a servant. And so he's he's coming from this uh, point of view of I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to show you how I live my life, how I do life, and as you watch my life, then. You do this too. Um, so, so he first of all says, I love you the way Christ loves you. And then he prays that our love would grow more. And I think that, um, that maybe Paul's wanting us in his prayer to grow into that loving like yeah. Jesus loves. Yeah. That's where he wants us to grow. And then verse 10, it says um, in the translation I was reading, it says, I want you to understand what really matters. He prays for the Philippian church that would understand what really matters. And those were the words that really gripped me. And I, I thought to myself, wow, okay, what, what really matters? What's Paul talking about? And as I sort of dug into the, the scripture a little bit more, he's not talking about right and wrong he's not talking about do this do don't do that which was his old life like that's as a pharisee that's what he did he followed a set of rules paul isn't praying that the philippians would follow a set of rules but he's praying that they would find what really matters to them because god's created all of us uniquely and so what matters to me is different to what matters to you kirsty what really matters to you Beck and Brioni. And so Paul's pray, praying this prayer that people would understand what really matters to them mm. and that they would express that in love. Yeah. And I think of a season in my own life where um, I was privileged to work in a Christian organisation and um, work under a Christian leader who was certainly and still is uh, definitely a servant leader. Um, I think this person is probably... Um, humility personified but um, so working with this this leader uh, one of the things that he enabled the people that were working with him to do was to find what really mattered to them and to follow that and in the organization I was really given the opportunity and the freedom to discover something that really really got on my heart and and really dug, hey, there's a bit of injustice that's happening here. I want to do something about this. And the leader that I was um, working with, he was like, go for it. And um, and so I was able to uh, create something new and pioneer. And it didn't just transform my life. Mm. And this is the really cool thing, that when you discover what really matters to you and you outwork that in love, it doesn't just transform you, but it ends up transforming people in your community, people in cities, people in the nation. Like it, it, it has that ripple effect, which is um, the amazing thing about church. And the scripture continues by talking about us bearing fruit. And that's the fruit. Mm. That's the fruit. When we discover what really matters, it transforms our life. It transforms the lives of those around us and brings a lot of joy. I love that. It, it's such a beautiful picture of what, uh, you know, a lot of theologians talk about with the book of Philippians. And really, it's just the church at large, which is that transformative love uh, that comes, that that joy, that transformative power, I guess the word is I'm looking for, um, that comes through a Christ-centered 
community. Brioni, I'd love if maybe you could expand on that, um, that transformative power of community, um, but the commonality that we share in Jesus. What would you say to that? Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the most amazing things about Paul's letter is that it was written from jail. And I'm sure there are people at home right now that feel like they're in a kind of jail. Mm. And maybe your letter doesn't sound as loving and joyful and affectionate as Paul's letter sounds when we read this. So it's important for us to then dive a little deeper into that to see mm. where is this joy coming from? Because I'm sure he wasn't finding it from the chains or the bad sleeps or the bad food. Totally. So where is he finding this joy from? And um, for, me, for me, I can see two things and that's he's finding joy because of Jesus and the advancing mm -hmm. of the gospel. Two things that, that we still have to this very day. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't have anything else, we have Jesus and the advancing of his gospel. Great. The thing I also just love about Paul and that maybe people might not know is that he is talking to real people in Philippians. He's talking to people like Lydia and the slave girl and the jailer and his family which to be honest, all these people probably don't have a lot in common, which can mm. sound a lot like that community life that we talk about in church. Even to Paul, they probably didn't have a lot in common, yet we can hear he's got this affection and longing to be with them as we hear in verse eight. And um, this affection is based on just one thing, and mm. that's the grace that we found, that we share and find in Jesus. His affection is based on God's grace. We as believers share in the same grace today. Like we can all sit here so different mm. and you might be at home even in a family that's so different, yet you can share in the grace of Jesus together. Even if it's the only thing we have in common, yeah. it's still strong enough to hold us all together. It's important that we don't ever just um, see love and relationships as just human to human. Yeah, we can't miss great. that element where I can't love you properly mm. until I've received the Father's love first. Yeah, I love and that. it's only until we receive that, that we can really love people with that, with that affection like Paul's talking about, with that um, unforgiving, relentless love, because people do hurt you. Yeah. And even in this, like, in this passage, people would have hurt Paul. Totally. But it's because of the love that we share in Christ and because of the grace we find in Jesus that we can, we can endure and we can fully love and you can find joy in that love. I love that. That is so beautiful. And that, um, that picture of diversity is really a picture of the kingdom of God. It's a, it's a picture that tells us we all belong. Yeah. And, and when we have that grace and that love that God gives us for other people and, and it draws people into our community that are different to us, it says something to people who are yet to belong. It says, you are welcome here, you belong here. Beck, I just wonder if you could touch on that for us, if you could talk about that sense of belonging. Uh, what do you see in the scripture there that really stands out to you? Yeah, in verse seven in the Passion Translation, it phrases it like this, you have a permanent place in my heart. And that just gives me a great picture of family because that. we don't get to pick who we're born to or the family that we land into. But um, once you're a part of a family, it's permanent, you know. Mm. Uh, it's a love I feel for my children. It's not based on their performance or their achievements or are you being well behaved today, your behaviour. It's it's permanent. They're my kids. I love them. Even on their rotten days, I still love them. <laughs> and, you know, Paul is imprisoned and yet he writes to this Philippian church that he is distant from and expresses joy. And it's not a joy of separation. It's not a joy of circumstance. It's not a joy based on a contract. It's a joy mm. based on the belonging that they have one to another. Mm. And I think that so we try to find our joy in in our situation like so many times we're looking for what is going to bring joy to me mm -hmm. and the truth is there is not always something you can find that will bring you joy but we can find joy within our situation mm -hmm. and in our relationships my family's far from perfect we have m flaws and mistakes and and challenges like every single family yeah. does um but there's so much joy belonging to a family. There's so much joy in having somewhere where you know 
it's your place. Yeah. You, you belong there. You're in. Um, and I think one of the challenges, particularly now in our modern society, is that we always fall into this trap of seeking to perfect our relationships, right. that mm. we have to meet the perfect person, be the perfect person, and then therefore make yeah. these perfect families and perfect homes. Um, and there's nothing wrong, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with trying to improve your relationships. That's a great goal to have. But we can really lose joy of belonging to one another mm. if everything is about a project yes. or a contract or yeah. you know sharing everything. It's just the fact that we belong. And in the house of God, it's so good to know, I just belong here. Yeah. Um, this is my home. These are my people. This is my family. I'm, I'm accepted. And so we can really choose joy in spite of our circumstances, as Paul displays perfectly, and allow the belonging that we have one to another in the family of God, that we are beloved, we are accepted permanently. No one can take yeah. that away from us. Yeah. Not our performance won't make it greater or lesser. Love it. We are permanently yeah. accepted and we can yeah. take so much confidence and find great joy in knowing that we belong to Christ and that we belong to each other. Yeah. I love that. And you know, there might be people who are, are listening in here and they say, that's really lovely for you, but I don't have my own family. You know, there's people in all different life stages and seasons. And the beautiful thing about the family of God is that it does not matter what our physical dynamics look like in our own family. God places us in His family when we come to Christ. And perhaps you're listening to this message and you're thinking, my goodness, I would absolutely love to belong in such a family. This God that you talk about, I've never heard him spoken about as so gracious and, and so, so much unconditional love and joy. And we would love to give you the opportunity right now, wherever you are, to make that decision to say, yes, Kirsty, count me in. I, I want to know God. I want to know his family the way that you're speaking about it. So wherever you are right now, if you're watching this on TV, there's a, a number that you can text yes to. But really, the decision that you're making right now in your home, you can just pray along with me, agree with me right now and say, yes, Kirsty, that is what I want for my life. So would you mind all agreeing with me and praying right now? Um, if you're at home watching, why don't you pray too? Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much that you love us. God, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to not just follow you, but that you've placed us in a family, a family that is transformative, that is filled with joy despite our circumstances. So God, we pray right now that for those people who are listening in who are saying yes right now in this moment, God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit being present with them, that they know and experience your love right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Ladies, I want to say thank you so much for bringing a beautiful passage of scripture to life. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Happy, thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all our mums out there. And like we said, we are praying for you, whoever you are, whatever your circumstance today. We love you very much and we can't wait for you to join with us next week.